Hello, welcome to the Daily Telegraph NRL podcast, grand final slash Daly M edition. Adam Mobbs here with Phil Buzz Rothfield and Michael Karianis. Boys, can you believe we're here? I, c- I can't believe you're here. What after do you mean your, I'm after here? After your antics last night. How dare you? Thoughts, Buzzy? I kept an eye on him. And? Uh, it was better than his first... Yeah, yeah, but you left. You left. But there is a reason right. you could keep your eye on me because could you just reveal to our loyal listeners what table you were on last night? I was on table two with ah. Andrew Abdo, Telstra executive. Wow. The commission member, McGrath, um, Joe Bromham from Foxtel. And you were yeah, I was on, on ta- table four. Table four with Russell Jackson, our chief of staff. Mm. Also, Jermaine Asako from the Dolphins, yeah. Terry Reader, the CEO of the Dolphins. Harry Grant, Will Warbrick, uh, Josh Morris. Really good. Where group. were you, Michael? I oh. couldn't find you. I was in the nosebleeds. Mate, I come up to see you and nearly booked a cab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you needed a break. You came and sat down next to me. It was that well, far I back. I went to the bathroom and it wasn't appropriate <laughs> to walk back to my table while there was an important speech. It was nice, to you, place. It was nice of you to uh, mingle with the unwashed in the back there, Buzzy. Yeah. Table 24. 24. 34, I thought you were. 24, on. 24. 34, I think, was the Bulldogs. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, about the, what about the Bulldogs and table? And the Dragons. Not that's two happy. years running for Cam Sorrell's team. They, I'm not happy with Cam Sorrell. He was quite rude to me last night. <laughs> Straight he into was. the drama. Oh, well, there was drama. I saw the Cronulla guys, Steve Mace and Fitz, and I went over to say hello, and there was a guy with dark hair. And so I shake hands, how are you? Small talk. No, shit, it's Cam Sorrell <laughs> who uh, we had a disagreement with. I ran that piece where I leaked those... The quotes about, he'd made about up. the nines. Yeah, the fake quotes, yeah. and mm. he wasn't happy with that. And so it was a bit awkward. Cameron was there with his lovely wife, and uh, yeah, it lo- just got a little bit awkward there, Adam. But that was my only <laughs> minor incident in the evening. Did you have any awkward moments, Mobsy? No, no, it was fine. I had a good chat with uh, Mark Robinson, the Warriors owner. He was in good spirits at the end of the night. Good spirits? Mate, he. Came charging at me, blowing up about Sean Johnson not winning. <laughs> yeah. He's not Mate, he was one. in good spirits, all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Mate, I, I was concerned. You sh- the speed. There was like de- uh, many Dallin with Tennis at Lesniak just mm. making. Paliacena it. coming towards you. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. No, no dramas. Anything for you? No, no. No, low key. No, I was. I came off the back of um, 360, so I was a little bit late. That's why you're well dressed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. You did look good last night. Oh, thanks, Buzzy. Mm. They've looked after you with those nice suits. Thank you, Buzzy. Thank you. Yeah. So no, no. Uh, I drove, so it was very low key for me. I drove. Very low key. I had two glasses of wine. That was all. I stayed till. How many beers did you have? A dozen. No. No. You no. did. No. Not that little. Listen. He means. Oh yeah. Listen. When you're on a TV table, table yeah. four like I was, oh. you've got to keep things professional and they yeah. were very, very particular with their drink service. So no, no, they they Very consistent. No, not no. really. Not really. Oh, we it couldn't was, get anything where we were. Oh, well, the you wait staff did talking. not want anything on the you table. You were talking in shorthand. <laughs> I was about to leave. You were. Ah. <laughs> no, but I went, I went straight home. A couple of colleagues and friends mm. from across the road kicked on to... Some eastern suburbs establishments, didn't they? Was yeah, Northside. They went Northside, actually. Oh, yeah. Northside. Yeah, Northside. Northside. One of my... Uh, uh, st- one of, well, Brent Reid. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to say one of my column <laughs> colleagues. There's only one. And Maybe. a former column colleague. <laughs> <laughs> Christian Nicolucci, yes. Maybe he didn't have his Tesla with him, Reid. <laughs> no, no Tesla. He was not driving. I can confirm Brent Reid was uh, not behind a, a vehicle last night. But, um, yeah, there we go. Dalian's what do you think of the awards? Are you happy? Results? Um, oh, look, I I thought Sean Johnson was probably the best player. Of the game. I, I was surprised how little Payne Haas polled in, in the end. I know he's deducted points for that suspension, but I, I was surprised that he finished, what, what, what's he's the ninth on the leaderboard? Yeah. Was let, that the le- let's run yeah, through this. They the deducted f- him six, did they? Yeah, for, for a suspension. So, so the still, final leaderboard was Caelan Ponga, 56, Sean Johnson, 55, Nico Hines, 54. I, I, I can't believe Nico Hines scored 54, like polled 54. What about that buzz? Well, I was talking to Mobsy earlier, and I've done the top 50 uh, for next week, and I'm struggling to get Nico in. But what I found staggering, guys, is that Cronulla recently had their Player of the Year awards, and he wasn't in the five nominations yeah. for the award. That, it is... Oh. 
And yeah. I am not bagging Nico Hines because I thought he had a, a good season. Solid, solid year. But I thought after he was dropped from origin, he just dropped his bundle a little. He, look, he missed the start of the season, yep. nearly yep. a month. Yep. yep. Then he played outstanding to make origin on the bench. And then he played pretty crap for about six week period after he was dropped. Well, look, look at the people that finished behind him. They all had better years than him. Yeah. And, uh, DCE, 50. Nathan Cleary, 48. Nathan Cleary was eight points off winning and he missed what, mm. how many games? Six, seven? Yeah. Uh, but this is the problem with this award in its current format in that Nico doesn't compete against as many players as Sean Johnson did. As, that's always been the case, Buzz. Look at the, but the same can be said for Ponga, who I was very happy to see. Yeah. He is in the spine as Willie Mason, better than what Willie Mason thinks, but he's not competing with a hook or a half and a five of course, eight for yeah. points. But it's always been the case for us. But would it be better if we did it out of 10, every player, 17 each week, and then did it that way? Probably. Well, the Penrith Panthers be, polled 131 but, points for the top 10 because you had Nathan Cleary on 48, Dylan Edwards on 42, and Isaiah Yeo on 41. But this is nothing You're penalised for being yeah, in a great side, we, Michael. We saw the Melbourne Storm, they had, like Cam Smith, Billy Slater, Cooper Cronk, they all won daily M's. They all mm. you know, stole points off each other, took points off it, not stole, took points off each other. It's just the reality. And the issue I've got with the out of 10, remember mm. rugby league, that was rugby league weeks. Thing. You know who won those awards? Blokes that top the tackle counts. Mm. You know? That, well, a lot of the time... That might say something for people like Tony Adams being judges. If you, if you went through the ju- like the, the results <laughs> hey? of them, if you went through the results of them, it, it was workmen. It was the toilers mm. yeah. who get 8 out of 10 every week. The VB oh, hard-earned index. Yeah, that's, so <laughs> oh, I don't think that works. Yeah, I'll say this. If anyone else but... Ponga had overtaken Johnson at the death, I would have thought this is wrong. But Ponga is a dead set out and out champion. What he did over that 11 week period with 11 wins was stuff I've very rarely seen in this game. I, I, thought, ever. About, I thought about this yesterday, Buzz. Like, so, Calum Ponga, and I think we're not giving enough credit to Calum Ponga's story, right? There was mm. genuine concerns if he would play again. Ever. But not only again. that, mate, even mm. before this, the drama last year. Yeah, but for him the... to come back from that, and nah. I'm talking. No, it is special. He was the captain of the club and he was in a hotel and he left. Yeah, the... yeah, but that doesn't affect his performance. I'm talking like we got to the. It wasn't very professional, Michael. Of course. I, I agree. That's why I'm saying his comeback is even more. Sp- and I'm not bagging him what happened last year. Everyone makes a mistake. Yeah. But I think the comeback story is what what he went through at the start of this year when he was yeah, in Canada. Mike had over round two. And everyone saw that and go, he may not play again and to yeah. finish the year. But does this rank... Like, this is a crazy second half of the year, right? But I, I don't think the form was as good as Tom Travojevic a couple of years ago. You know, when he was yeah, he that was... standout season. Jared mm. Hayne, that standout season. I thought he had a an outstanding year, but uh, it wasn't... In, in 10 years' time, I don't think I'll be sitting here going, remember the Caelan Pong is 2023 season. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know about that. I, I thought he was effective over 11 weeks as Turbo was over I the full season. I don't think he was. I don't. I, oh, mate. I don't yeah. think it was up there with that, that Tommy Turbo season. I, I, look, I, I'm not saying over the whole season, but I'm saying his 11-week run was up there with anything Turbo did. That's was, my view. Yeah. Mobsy, you got the casting vote. Yeah. That... that you look at that 10-week winning streak, and it was amazing. They knocked off a couple of decent teams in there, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, it's It kind of rankles with me a little bit that to see that you know, he, he came from the clouds. It was a thrilling finish, but looking at it, there's some people who are upset that Sean Johnson didn't get it. And he didn't play bad. He didn't get points last game. I heard Vossi on radio this morning saying he had a couple of try assists. And it was the Gold Coast Titans game, yeah, that he should have polled. Yeah. Um. For Sean Johnson and well, look, you I won't I, know who stuffed that up. Because I know. This, yes. I've got no issue with Caelan Winnett either. By the way, like, um, what I did like was Sean Johnson when they announced that Caelan was white, he was shitty. Yeah. Like he was, he, had, he had genuine <laughs> disappointment. You know how mm. we usually sit there and you fake smile yeah, and you're yeah, yeah. Rats. I actually enjoyed the fact that he wanted to win. Well, you mm. don't get op- opportunities to win. Those I, things I think, very it, but often. you're talking about comebacks and pongers. What about yeah. his comeback? Outstanding. From being a 
average player for a year or two. Been out, out the door. Yeah. You know, I, I understand. But for like for Nico Hines to finish two points off the leader, <laughs> that's what I've got the biggest issue with. Mm. Nico Hines wasn't the third best player in the game this year. No. He wasn't no. the 10th best player in the game this but year. But I, I explained he's not competing with anyone at Cronulla. Tell me who's competing with. No, I get points. that buzz. But know, also with that buzz. And Cronulla did make the eight. So the team's had a good year. But he's the name. Do you think... Who, I, I like, who got it who, who got it? Yeah, that's So who got it wrong, Buzzy? These guys that had... The judges got it wrong. Or Cronulla in their player of the year where they didn't have him in the top five. Cronulla had a softer draw than a lot of the top sides as well. No, but do you know what I mean? What I'm saying? I think Cronulla would have a better understanding of their top five players. Yeah, they would, than, yeah. So they don't have him in their top five players in the club. We've got crazy. Him the, we've got him the third mm. best player in the game. I think it's both crazy. tearing players down. You had a whack at Ponga winning. Now no. you're having a... <laughs> I'm not having a crack Come on, there. mate. I'm not... This isn't you. You're a nice person. I'm quite happy for Kalen to win. <laughs> well, you didn't sound like you were. You reckon Turbo was better this and that. And I just said if we're ranking those years, like if we're ranking the Turbo year or the Hain year this or the Pongi year, nasty. I'll have him, I'll have him third. nasty. Um, I've got it's a question for you. I didn't know you had. I, 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 <laughs> we, we know. <laughs> hanging around you too long. No, I'm disappointed. <laughs> I am. Um, a question for you, and this is thinking back to a couple of years ago when he, when he came so close to winning it, but Nathan Cleary had that injury this year. He's a couple of points off winning it. He's got to win a Dalian before he retires. He's, yeah, he plays know, a full season. He wins He it. wins one. Yeah. He should have won the Jack White and one, shouldn't he? Yeah, I think so. And I don't again, know how that, I'm not bagging Jack White. Sounds like you are. No, I'm not. As I keep saying... I knew you had that nasty streak in you. <laughs> as I keep saying, I'm not big noting. I've seen Sterling, I've seen Langer, I've seen Johns, Thurston, all of them. Cronk for premierships, is it? Don't like me, though, Cooper. Do you ever <laughs> see him on 360? He never comes in. He always goes reedy side of the table when he's singing. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't give me the, even say hello. <laughs> but anyway, sorry for writing. He was coaching two clubs once. <laughs> Um, <laughs> what? He's, and he still is? Yeah, 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 mm. he is. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, I think Cleary, <laughs> I think Cleary, yeah. by the time he retires, will be in the same Thurston Johns class. By the time he retires, Michael. Thur he always, he's tracking in that direction. Well, has anyone Who won three I? straight times? Not at his age. At 25. Who? As a halfback leading a side. Cause are you, you going to run with me on this? Yeah. Hey? We're, all well, running, we're all running with you. Yeah. Thank you. I think he's tremendous. Tremendous He's player. tracking nicely. Mm. Yeah. You know. And look, you guys like Ricky had won three titles by the time he was, what, 27. Alfie had won two in Sydney. And he'd also won up with um, up in the Brisbane comp with, what, Ipswich. Yeah. So before the Broncos joined the comp. So there have been examples of halves who have done a lot at an early age but yeah Cleary's is something else at the moment so um, and what are we doing next Adam well I'm just going to run through so the final Dally M women's leaderboard Tamika Upton 27 points the Roosters Taryn Aiken on 26 and Samaya Taufa former Eel now Canberra Raider she was on 22 you got an Eels uh, mention in there Buzzy yeah. Yes. well they you're did. the only Eels representative there last night I, I think Buzz well yeah, I was going to segue into that yeah I didn't watch all the women but to make it, thank goodness she won. She's 10 points the best player in that comp. She mm. is a sensational player. Double Mick. win for the Knights. Yes. Do you First agree? Time. Yeah, I agree. You're I running agree. with me today, aren't you? It's taken me 26 rounds and three weeks of finals <laughs> to coach you. <laughs> what about Mick? What about Dally M Snubs? You mentioned that. Well, yeah. Momsy was the highest ranked Eels official there <laughs> last night. Where was my man Jim Sarantino? What about Jay Drayton? He's a Dally M specialist. Oh, he wasn't there. Can't find an invite. Brad Arthur, Mitchell nope. Moses, Clint Gutherson. No, no one. one. That's, I reckon that's piss poor. They had a board meeting last night. Oh, Care Factor. Okay. B O R E D or? Well, maybe. That's not right. Just because they missed the finals doesn't mean you. They got throw snubbed the from the awards last night, last year. So maybe there was a. Doesn't matter. Every club mm. should be represented. A lot of clubs were underrepresented last underrepresented. night. Underrepresented. Who else? I think Roosters. Roosters, Dragons, um, Manly. A lot of coaches didn't go. Usually it's a hotbed for for coaches. Mm. I think about half didn't go. Right. Um, we've got it all in the column. It's all online now. Do you? Yeah. yeah. 
Wow. All the ins and outs, a bit of daily M gossip. Mm. The Storm only had two, and that was Will Warbrick and Harry Grant. And um, Belly I, was normally there with his yeah, beautiful, beautiful suit. suits. Mm. Yeah. And I'm not going to speak ill of those guys because they were a terrific company. But we had we had a very military style wait staff who did not because it was are you going to bore us no no this, yeah, this was this mate. is for Harry Grant because there's a grand he final played, on Sunday he played this very well he had his lovely partner there with him and so he had it wasn't going overboard he was drinking mid strengths but he had his beer there and another beer in front of his partner so he'd finish one and then nice. he'd just sip on another one not going overboard but I tell you what there's a reason he's a crafty hooker mm. he was he was playing chess and That's a season pro. Checkers. That's a season pro. But you couldn't do that. Meanwhile, you were sitting next to Russ. He would have been sculling yours too. Oh, Meanwhile, yeah. listeners, um, there's a grand final. Oh, Half past seven. Acor Stadium. Right Sunday right. afternoon. Oh, so now you want to talk football. Mm. for the first. So the first time in 30 weeks you want to talk football. It'd be handy. Oh. Mr. 80-20. It's not your strength. <laughs> Sorry? It's not your strength. <laughs> what do you mean it's not my strength? <laughs> Give me a break. You what? need one. What are you going <laughs> the front of the book for? You want to talk I'm about looking, war on the home I'm front? I'm looking to my story I did on the Battle of the Beer Companies. Uh, oh, right. Oh, wow. They've ordered thousands of extra litres of Forex. The 7,000 extra litres of Forex gold. I'm glad it's not Forex bitter, but Forex gold to Acor. It's going to be hot out there at Forex. Acor too. Yeah, bitter or gold? I don't know. I'm a Tui's new twist top throwdown man. Where yeah. are you, Mobsy? Hmm? But I never... Ever drink while I'm working. Ever. It's a secret that a few of the old journalistic greats taught me very <laughs> early in my career, Adam. Do not drink and write. You know there's a grand final on Sunday, 7.30, of course, stadium. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, that's what I'm trying to get to. What's your beer of choice? Are we allowed to talk about I'm a bit of a connoisseur. I. Are you one of those? Oh, or, or a just like a bit, get about anything. It's really You're on cold. You Peronis last night, weren't you? Nah, someone got me one. I'm not a big Peroni fan. Yeah, right. Great Northern Super Crisp because yeah, they're mid strengths. Yeah. They're easy. I don't like that. The ales, pale ales and stuff. No, I don't yeah, mind them. I don't like. I cannot drink them. Really? Yeah. Yeah, not for me. I like the um, James. Is Quires there a has Greek beer? Yeah. What's the Greek beer? Mythos. Mythos. Drink Mythos. It goes good. Does it? Yeah. <laughs> Fix. I think yeah. the other one goes good. <laughs> Yeah, right. Buzzy, can you run through some of those stats there of how much Is there a food? Greek beer? Why are you so shocked by the fact that there's a Greek beer? <laughs> well, there'll be 120,000 <laughs> cups of beer sold. Um, how many are you having? I just... You weren't <laughs> listening, were you? I do not drink on the job. I, sorry, there's oh. Canadian Club, Jim Bean and Cola, Gravity Seltzer, Brookvale Union, Ginger wow. Beer, Bundaberg okay. Rum. Excuse me. 25,000 buckets of chips. How many are you having? 10,000 <laughs> hot dogs. I'll probably have... Well, we having pizza. Yeah, we'll have pizza You're here be in on the Sunday. Office. Yeah. So what are you talking about? I'm just talking about what we served to the punters. For the, for the 80,000 listeners who will be oh. attending the game. The 80,000 <laughs> listeners. We spiked. Well, tell a friend. Yeah, tell Let a friend. Let them know. Click on the feedback icon. <laughs> yeah. Um, Righto. Let's talk some seriousness for a minute. Mm. That might help. Yeah, well, 33 degrees maxing out at a core stadium. It's not coming down much Can in we temperature. Go back today? What's, uh, are you going to order? So you're going to order the pizzas on Sunday? Oh, we're going to talk football now. Anchovies? What happens if there's none? I always order anchovies. Yeah, but wasn't there some drama around origin? Mm. Yeah, it wasn't thin and crispy. It wasn't anchovies. He did. No, you snuck him in one pizza, yeah, and I, I had one. Everyone in the conference room blew up because it smelt the room out. <laughs> Would there be any ice creams? Uh, no, Jimmy Silver's bringing a hummingbird cake in. I'm very excited. A what? Hummingbird cake. What's that? Go Google it. It's very nice. He's he spending the f- whole day yeah. baking it for us. Yes. He bakes? Yes. Yeah. Yes, he bakes hummingbird cake. So no, can we talk you. footage? Yeah, yeah, we've yeah. gone off track. Um, do you think the heat's going to be concerned, Buzzy? Because it's still going to be pretty hot at 7.30 for kickoff. It's absolute scorcher, isn't it? We're probably mm. lucky it's a nighttime grand final, guys. Well, I am concerned about the women kicking off at 3.50. Yeah, yeah. That oh, looks yeah. good, that hummingbird cake. Mm, very Can good. Can I just say this heat will favour the Broncos because of their climate? And well, it doesn't get hot in Penrith? Not as hot as it regularly is. If you look at the average temperature of Penrith and look at the average temperature of Brisbane, there'll be a substantial difference and it is much hotter up there and... Will it be a one percenter? I don't know. No. You don't think so? No. 
It won't be an issue. Mm. Especially they're playing they kick off at 7 30, 8 o'clock. Like, it'll be an issue for the poor women and the um, state cup, the state championship sides. I sort yeah. of think it's still going to be 28 degrees at kickoff for the main game. I think it'll be fine. I don't, I don't I never it. swim at home before I come in. <laughs> <laughs> what about this guy saying, oh, it'll be fine when I'm sitting in the air conditioning? I've got to do a sideline, mate. Oh, do you? Do you? For so you're working sideline? State champs. Oh, no, no, state, champs. state champs. State champs. I was going to blow up. No, yeah. state champs, mate. you got to all my focus on grand final. Jeez, that'll I'll be, be sw- interesting. I'll you be doing who are they playing? South and Brisbane East. Mm. Yeah. Do you know any of the players? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't done my research yet, Buzzy. I do know the players, of course, but um, I'll sit down. You couldn't name three Brisbane East players. I could not. Thank you. Who are you cheering for on Sunday? I mean, you don't cheer for your own team, the Dragons. So, <laughs> Buzz, not, who are you cheering for on Sunday? There's not much to cheer for. The taxpayer <laughs> is cheering. paying for a man to sit on the sideline who can't name one Brisbane East player. I, I couldn't name one. This is no, concerning. No, I, I, I couldn't name three. I couldn't name but one because I saw the sides last the other week and I knew George Jennings was playing for him. That's the only one I could name. But the team list is here. And if there's Media Watch Jonah have Pezzett, Riley any Jacks. sense, they will pick this segment up. <laughs> and Why? You're for, the, Why? The, the taxpayer's man yeah. doesn't know the teams. On a Thursday. <laughs> Let's get back to the Sunday. game. Oh, we're trying. Who are you cheering for on Sunday, Buzz? What do you want? Rabbitohs or the Tigers, uh, Buzz? Look, <laughs> um, I would like to see Brisbane win. Would you? Because only because it's I like these things going in turns, and everyone gets a go. Yeah, and they've been so exciting. Except for Parramatta. I really like Kevin Ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're out of control today. <laughs> I haven't had much sleep. I'll tell you what, very loose for a bloke who was on. Yeah. Driving last night. I didn't have. I did not have one. I'll tell you the different yeah, last night. I, I love Kevy Walters, and first, second, third bloke I bumped into was Kevy last night, mm. and he was so nice, so friendly, so chatable. And then I bumped Serrato, you know, and Serrato's at Canterbury. I'm talking Penrith here. Yeah, no, but what I'm saying <laughs> is just the the difference in the person, and yeah, I, I guess he's had more to cheer for. What, uh, what about Andrew Webster's speech when he said, "Oh." To Kevin and Ivan. Oh, Kevin, that sounded very formal, didn't it? Kevy, sorry. Kevy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was very good. He no, was... he's a great... I'd love to see Kevy Walters win it. I'd love to see him embrace his son um, after the game. Um, I love the style of football this side has played all year with Walsh, Staggs, Farnworth, Cobber, Reynolds. That magnificent middle they've got with Carrigan, with Flegler, with Haas. They'd, I just love watching them play. And same with Penrith. I like them too, but it's another team's turn. Mm. You know, the argument about greatness, seeing three in a row. Yeah, well, that'd be terrific. That'd be terrific. They sat in the table next to me and they're so well behaved, those Penrith boys. We keep going on about their arrogance. Mm. No, they're good. They're they, good they were so nice to just to be around, you know, last night. What about you, Mick? Um, I think oh, Penrith. Yeah, I, like I can't cheer for it. I can't I, look. I don't really care. Um, don't preface it. Just get out. But get Penrith, out. yeah, I'd love to see them win, win three. I'd love to see them win five. You know, like just go all in, and there's nothing stopping them from from doing it. Um, but this is. I don't think I've been this excited for a grand final. Like it's a weird grand final because the build up's a little bit boring. Because there's no bad blood between the two sides. There's no drama. Um, but I am so looking forward to the contest. Mm. And, and I think it's a grand final that's going to live up to the hype. We've got two sides that are in form that are going to go at it. And if, if Brisbane win and, and you see you know, Adam Reynolds lift a trophy, you see Reese Walsh, you see the Walters family um, embrace, I'll be fine with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, this Penrith side is special. and We're, we're in the midst of, of greatness. Yeah, I can't believe I'm saying this as an Eels fan, but they're going to equal Parramatta's three straight if they do it, but kind of leaning Penrith way in that regard. They're just... I love watching great well, teams. You live up there, Mobsy. Yeah, it's tough doing that as an Eels fan. What, but is a, what it's like out there, Mobsy, at the moment, considering they've had such yeah, so success? Oh, excitement. Yeah, excitement. There people flags. are... Flags up, houses decorated, every other person's got a Panthers jersey on, a real vibe about the place. So um, yeah. obviously a few thousand at... Um, training and their fan day on Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? 
Tuesday, the week, yeah. It's Tuesday. What about it's been the a long excitement week. in Brisbane with the AFL team as well? Mm. Oh. And who's their superstar in the AFL team? Because yeah, Lockie Neal. Michael Voss. Oh, <laughs> But you, you see what the Korean Mail... Jason Akamanis, are they still the, going around these days? <laughs> <laughs> They're Brisbane Lions folks. Like yeah, them. yeah. You like that? Yeah. That's, you see what the Korean Mail are doing? They're doing a double-sided mask, so you can have the AFL player one side mm. on Saturday, then you flip it over, it's Reese Walsh with the... Who's the AFL player, was quite clever. Lockie Neal won the Brownlow this oh, week. Oh, Brownlow, of course, yeah. Controversial. Drama. Yeah, they, they had yeah. some similar issues around... Uh, polling votes and performances and whatnot. Yeah, I was so, filthy about that. Um, the other bloke should have won. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're with that. Can I ask a question? Nope. So, <laughs> seriously, um, you quiet. need some sleep. I do. What's up? <laughs> What's up? Yeah, Far Bruce, out. What do you that. think about... Reese Walsh is an antagoniser. He gets under people's skin. He got sent off in origin to a standing ovation... Universally loved, or I don't know if it's as universally loved south of the border, but and then Jerome Luai, very similar player and much more polarizing. Why is everyone on Jerome Luai's case? Well, should I be asking the Gronk here? Or uh, no, no, no. Oh, two things. Jerome and I are sweet. Oh, hang on. Breaking news, Buzz. How are you sweet? Well, no. To his credit, he came up. I was avoiding him on the media day because I just didn't want to cause a scene and. Um, but he, he came and, and sought me out and shook my hand and said, we're all good. Jeez, you and buried said, the lead. How, how far uh, into this podcast well, are we? Last time I spoke I on this podcast, it got me in, the, got it me in some trouble. Oh, hey. How? That... <laughs> how did it get you in trouble? <laughs> it caused a bit of... It caused some feedback from our loyal listeners some and some, some, types, some, some uh, not loyal uh, listeners. I'm assuming it wasn't the loyal <laughs> listeners that were... Well, that's the it. proof that this man... Jerome Lua is a very decent. Which bloke. was my. Mm. This was my whole point from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. This was, and I've, I've said all along. Well, I've said it on here. That, and more, you, more you at fault for having a, <laughs> for having a stink with a such a nice human. <laughs> this is. I tell you what. This uh, this revelation's got me really swinging towards Penrith now. Oh, but I, I, this is the thing. I, I don't. I get it. I get. He's one of those guys for opposition teams. Because the difference is, right, the difference he's... between Reese Walsh and Jerome Luai is the off-field stuff. Hmm. Like, like Jerome pl- has played the villain off the field as well, where Reese hasn't. In but... terms of his social media posts and yeah. some of the comments and that sort of stuff. That's why... But he hasn't found himself in trouble with the police, arrested no, uh, for uh, no, no, anything. Yeah, and no doubt. Reese Walsh but, has had those. But that's, that's, that's where it's different. Reese Walsh hasn't... You know, told people to go enjoy work tomorrow know, and stuff I like know. that, which has rolled up you know. the the fans. And I think that's that's more the issue rather than the on-field stuff. Mm. And I'm not having a go at Reese Walsh about that because he really came out and owned that when that incident happened, yeah, which I did. thought was terrific for someone so young. And like some others, yeah, it's yeah. Well, that's right, exactly right. So, uh, yeah, it's and I I've gonna see you sat there and said there was no bad blood, but. You remember Jerome Lua standing over a prone Selwyn Cobbo in Origin last year when he got knocked out in the third yeah, minute. Yeah, but we went through that through Origin. They've had that encounter. Yeah, since, I think there'll be. I think. Know? I think with those forward packs, they're so ferocious. Buzzy Fisher, Harris, and Leota, and um, Haas and Flegler. I I think something's gonna explode. Explode hopefully. at some hopefully point. Hopefully, there's some sort of build up. Look, the the, the question, the, the one thing I'm interested to see is the reaction of the Penrith play, if they do lose, if they're humble, because that's been some of the criticism as well. And I've got no issue with them having a little bit of swagger. A little, if I was mm. in my early 20s playing for my local club, winning premierships, earning crazy money, well, I'm going to have some swagger too. So mm. I've got no issue with that. But, you know, people are waiting for them to fall and see how they react if, if they do lose. Because we've seen, you know, the, the, com- the glory, glory, singing glory, glory, the, yeah. the Parramatta's, our sons and all this stuff, mm. you know. Mm. So we've seen that sort of stuff post-grand finals, which is fine. But the theatre will be what happens if they do lose and how they do react. There's no evidence in anything they've done to suggest they'll be bad losers. No, but I, I'm not saying there is, but it will be interesting to see. You know, maybe Brisbane come a, come out with Brisbane uh, pa- Penrith can't play. Maybe Adam Reynolds gets on stage and says <laughs> Penrith can't play. <laughs> you right over there, Buzz? Yeah, no, just looking at the form, the teams. And yeah, I'm still fine. Still with us? You, you want to participate over here, Mick? And I'm having a great I'm chat. Fine, don't worry. Mate, I've carried you two all year <laughs> in the <laughs> first half hour today. Oh, look, you I'll, want me to lift? No, well, give I want, me a break. I want to ask you something here. Even the here. best of us get tired. That was <laughs> a late night last night. You went early. I am tired. You I went three sixty. Night and we had Greek there last night. I loved last 
Thursday night. Did you? What did you? What did you have? That's interesting. Just some sort of Greek rap. It was beautiful. Yeah, like anyway, a year or, or like we're a not rap. at He's dinner yet. It's it's like Brent Reed's here with that description of food, wasn't it's it? Rap. Whoa. Can I ask a question on this one as well? What about the grand final heartbreak? Zach Hosking has played 21 quality games for Penrith this season and the last couple of weeks has lost his spot to Luke Garner. Um, I guess on the flip side, it's not quite the same, but still monumental in this fact. Corey Oates has had nah, a 200, 201 career games, yeah. only nine in this season, and Jesse Arthur's has That's been That's the preferred. one for me. That is the one. Like I know Hoskins played the Corey Oates. You know, he's played 10 years at the club, played Origin, 200 games, and then... Part of 2015. Make the grand final and you're out the back door. I think, like, Zach Hoskins had a really good, you know, a solid season. And, you know, he'd, I'm sure, you know... would Which be game and Sam? 21 games. I, I get it. I get it. But, you know, he's been there for one year. And so has mm. Lucana, right? But mm. Corey Oates is, is one of... You know, yeah. Little top try scorers for the Broncos and all, all this sort of stuff, the right? And Cobo deserve to be. I'm not. No, no. I'm not saying they don't. But I'm just saying if we're looking at heartbreak or hard luck tales, it's more for my. I'm more caught on Corey Oates than I am on Zach Hoskin. And Jamin Salmon's fallen out of favour. No, he's been Penrith. since he signed for Canterbury. He's yeah. barely been cited. Jamin That's Salmon good signing at the Bulldogs. Um. <laughs> can't even make the top twenty-two at Penrith. Uh. Well, he can't. <laughs> <laughs> New South Wales Cup player at South, mm. the fullback. Oh, Blake Taff. Blake Taff, yeah. What's the front rower's name? Tackle. Takiyaho. Takiyaho. How's his knees? Busted three years ago at East. Can't imagine what why things Drew, were frosty last, last night with Cam Sorrell, though. Drew Hutchinson. Hey? Drew Hutchinson. Yeah, Drew Hutchinson. Your thoughts? Your man Gus is doing no, no, a let's good rebuild. Kurt Mann. And weren't they going to go local? Who have they lost? They're two locals, Avarillo and the other fellas. Alamotti. Paul Alamotti's going to Penrith. What about Stephen Crider? Oh, superstar. Do you feel a little bit sorry for him? for going to Okay. Oh. Every play in the grand final, Reese Walsh is probably my favourite. My number two is Stephen Crider. Even next year? Yeah, I hope he does well, but I think he'll struggle at fullback there because they don't have a, you know, they don't have a half. Who else are they sign? I'm enjoying this game. <laughs> no, well, it's Jason true. Taylor's appointment. Can I say with Stephen Crichton, he is the supreme athlete. He's the supreme athlete. Have you seen Crichton belt blokes in defence? Uh, mm. He's so he was New South Wales best player in Origin. He was. Yeah, he's he's he's, he's something else as an athlete, isn't he? Who else can yeah. we? Have they signed anyone else? No, you didn't mention you. Oh, you, you mentioned Jason Taylor. Jason that appointment, Taylor. yeah, Jason Taylor, another buzz exclusive, <laughs> which you jumped in on yesterday. I did not. <laughs> you did uh, politely Mate, though. Yeah, p- very politely. I cannot fault your table manners. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> on that story. Thank you. Lots of fascination around the doggies next year, the West Tigers next year, the St George Illawarra Dragons, South Sydney, South Sydney Rabbitohs. That's the one be, for me. I'm sort of looking forward to next year before we get this Already? Oh, my goodness. Aren't you? No. I Just need an off-season. your team as well. Why's that? That'll be fine. Who have you signed? Para. Kelma to mm, Good signing. Cronulla haven't signed anyone. Yeah. Not one player. You were about retention. You were like South 12 months ago, weren't you? It was retention. Not one player, Mickey C. I think they got two spots open, the Sharks. Oh, with not a lot Don't of cash. Don't think we got no. No cash. Mm-hmm. If I'd had more time, I'd love to know where we're going to improve next year. On the field? Hmm? Mob's just trying to be fair. Leave it to me, mate. Yeah, mate. <laughs> <laughs> You'll Seriously, give a colour, man. Right you on. are many things, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you are not funny. You are not funny. Uh, okay? I think the guests on table four last night would beg to differ. Oh, really? Fantastic oh, company. Wow. Uh, who wins and why? Uh, Get off your phones. Can I, am I just doing this myself? Uh, oh, my we're goodness. We're working. You're working? Uh, really? Trying to do this NFL fantasy You're train. playing Snake on that uh, phone. Snake? <laughs> oh, guess I'll start. You Penrith got will a little win giggle. this grand final because there's that old rule you've got to play one to win one and they have so much grand final experience. They've lost two or three, four players from the side that won, what, three years ago, but... They're just so big game, these players. They're so well drilled. They're yep. so well coached. They've got speed. They've got class. They've got power. They've got the works. 
And the Broncos will give them a fantastic game of footy, but there are some fellas there that might benefit from the run and come back next year and win it. But I think it's one of the few games that will be like origin-like, where you know, club mm. games where we see it's going to be origin-like. We're going to see it's as Buzzy said, it's going to be fast, it's going to be end-to-end, it's going to be physical. There's going to be second phase play. There's going to be a little bit of madness. There's some off the cuff um, play, and I honestly I am so looking forward to this match. Like it's you know it, it's grand final night, and and you should be excited. But this is two in-form heavyweights going at it. The two mm. clearly the best sides. Uh, I think if Penrith are anywhere near a hundred percent, they win. Yeah, they'd have to be below ninety for for Brisbane, mm. and Brisbane will have to be at a hundred percent to beat them. But I think Brisbane do have the game to to beat them with that second phase, with their forwards dominating potentially in that middle third, and and, and Walsh and Stags and Farnworth and playing off the back of that. But I think Penrith will contain them, and I think Penrith will win. Because you know what I'm looking forward to seeing is how the Broncos defense and how individual players react to being put under pressure because mm. when when you've got Nathan Cleary coming over that left hand side and he's got Luai there and he's got uh, Yo he's got Taruva on the wing he's got Tunga whichever way he goes you've got to make a decision mm. whether you go out or you stay in and it, they will break them down and I think yeah I, I think they'll stick with him for a little bit and I think Penrith you know will kick I'm away got, sorry no, go go. it's going to be a very hard game to cover because as you know, we've got massive deadline pressure. You've got to hit the button as soon as the siren goes. And you write an 800 words, right? And, mate, I like a blowout. Yeah. So you can start. I, I do. <laughs> Early I drama, blow. blowout, yeah. goal. <laughs> you know, Freddie getting towelled up didn't worry me too much because <laughs> we knew at half time yeah, which way yeah. to go with our story. Yeah. But you know the worst? When Cronulla won in 16. Yeah. I was in with my laptop sitting with all the fans. Yeah. And I had three different intros, yeah, I you know. know. I know. Yeah. And mate, it was so stressful. And you got to, like, the heart, like, this is, I don't know if people care, but, you know, in the last five or 10 minutes, your head's down a lot because mm. you're. Yeah, I know. You know, and you've got to try and, and watch what, what's going on and yeah. stuff. So it's, yeah, it's not ideal, but. You know what I'd Some like? Some of your copy reads like that too. <laughs> yeah. I haven't watched it. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Uh, George Jennings was sorry, tremendous Michael. in the <laughs> state championship final. Yeah. Exclusive. You'll, you'll start putting New South Wales Cup players in your match record. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see... You know what? I, I'd like to see Brisbane go to a lead early and see how Penrith react. Mm. I uh, want a blowout. <laughs> <laughs> You're special. not doing match. 65. You're not doing match. You've still got to write a column, you fool. What am I writing about? Uh, something. What are you, half time entertainment? I'll feed I'm you writing stuff. about the you know, game, you You goose. could write about half time entertainment. Oh, Michael, Michael, a you've clanger. had a long year, mm. you need a spell. So Trust me. If it's if half time entertainment is a clanger, Buzz is not allowed to Please near don't it. coach me on how to write a grand <laughs> final story. How many grand finals is this, Buzz? 45. Oh, wow. <laughs> Where were you in 1978? Minus how many? Plenty. Yes. Eight. Something. Yeah. <laughs> Eight years before your mum and dad even thought about you. Oh, well, I'm sure they thought about me. <laughs> <laughs> and you too, director. <laughs> I haven't said a word. Show quietly. some bloody respect. <laughs> it's a grand final edition. Show some respect. Uh, all I ask for. Let's go to some loyal listener questions, oh, Mick. Right. Yes, all right. No, you're right. They're better than last week's. <laughs> <laughs> what was wrong with that? Do you even remember last no. week's? No. no. Uh, hi, guys. Do you think the, uh, there should be an NRL's Players Player Award? Would be interesting to see who the players feel the best in the comp goes to, regardless of any suspensions. I don't feel the Daily M always goes to the best player. The RLPA do a player's player, don't they? Who won it, Johnson? Uh, it's not there yet. Yeah, I wouldn't mind a player's player award. Okay. Might take away from the main one, though. Yeah, they don't want, I know I wouldn't want to do that. No. Mobsy? Yeah, yeah uh, I don't think they'd change. Like you said, I think, yeah, it would just add a bit of confusion in there. But the RLPA's got their own one there. Um, and I see our listeners said that he would think Walsh would win, but mm. that's why the Dally M's best and fairest. You know, I th- don't think you can swear at the referee the way you did in no, that you, award. Yeah, agreed, agreed. <laughs> Had a great season, though. Uh, another Dally M, this was an email from Mansour. What do you think of this? All players, even if suspended throughout the year, are eligible to earn Dally M points. At the end of one, uh, year one, uh, at the end of the year, one Dally M point is deducted for every week a player is suspended. But don't we deduct them anyway? Uh, you're ineligible if you have a 
it's, it's two suspensions. It's yeah, that's multi, right. Yeah, multi yeah. weeks. Mm. So maybe it's too harsh now, deducting six points. Oh, you got to deduct six though, because you can yeah, pick up six in a game. Yeah, mm. yeah, I guess so. It's the best and fairest award. We can't complain about I, it. I, the way I look at the Daily Ends... The Rothmans medal, you know, used to get wiped straight away. If you were suspended. Sent off, you were yeah. out. I, I look at, historically, the, and there's not too many times where the person that's won the award has not been the best player in the competition. So I actually think the award's fine. Jack Wyden's probably the only one that springs to mind. Mm. Before that and since then, I don't think you could... You know, you could mount an argument that Callum Ponga wasn't the best player in the competition, but... You'd have to concede mm. that he was very oh. bloody good. Yeah. I tell you what, that speaking of the Dally M Awards, I'd like to see the ability to uh, award joint coaches. We have joint winners before. Mm. Um, when they're po- I couldn't separate those three. Yeah, It would have been an enormous moment last night if Walters, Cleary and Webster yeah. all got up together. Good point. Should have happened. Good point, Buzzy. That's nice. Thank you, you You've Michael. got some pull. Used to. Oh, can you suggest it? Oh, I don't have much sway, mate. I'm on the way out. You know that. You still got some sway, <laughs> man. Some of us on the way up, though. Um, Pete wants to know, <laughs> what are your most annoying habits? My most annoying Yeah, habits. it says please answer for each other, but I don't think we can Oh, there, mate, if you go, I drive my family mad all the time just being a goose at home. <laughs> it's not just your family. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's two last from the non-funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's two out of twenty. Uh, What's your most annoying habit? Giggling. Um, no, nah, it's probably like leaving. I don't know, like at home, I'd do it, like something at home. Do you clean up after yourself? Yeah, at home? yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what it'd be? Do you wash yeah. iron? I don't iron, but I wash. Yeah, do you? yeah. You know what it'd Just be? Just take the dishwasher. Yeah, uh, on the yeah. Do you unpack it? Yeah, because my my you hang wife the clothes out. Yeah. The only thing I don't do is iron, really. All your joint needs is uh, some decorations in that room you do your live costs from. You know how much feedback I get about that room? Mate, it mm. looks but terrible. But it's be- Like, no one understands. Like, the, where the cat... Like, Tell I- you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get send a stylist out to you. <laughs> I am. Expense? Yes. <laughs> what are the expenses? I was talking to the lovely Eloise Sawyer from Fox oh, Sports yeah. News last night about changing up your uni bomber style yeah. room that you do your crosses to on a fr- Friday. Fridays, Friday? yeah. Yes. So uh, she was in a grants. But it's it's hey, can't it's, you afford a painting or a pot plant or look, something? <laughs> the way the room the way the room is, right? So the the angle of it is the air conditioning units at the top. You're not going to put something under the air conditioning unit. Just the rest of the room, there's, there is, but it's just the way. And I've got a nice outlook. I'm upstairs. I've got a nice outlook over, over the area. I love the, my office. It's a, it's, it's a very good place to work. It's not great for the aesthetics. That's all we're saying. Well, anyway. <laughs> uh, well, so, yeah, all right. Ryan wants to know, will Jason Demetrio be the coach under most pressure next year? He'll be up there. Who's the other one, Buzzy? Um, I, this is a question so, without yeah. notice. I so, haven't done yeah. my homework here. Um, I don't know. Oh, oh, Brad Arthur, I would think. Yeah. Anyone else? Toddy Payton? No, mm. th- think think more Sydney. Keep going. Well, it's not Flanagan. No. no. Cameron no. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we wanted for the grab. Um, Chris, <laughs> <laughs> this is a question for you, Buzz. See, I'm not like you two. <laughs> if I'm feuding with someone, I don't get nasty and turn the blade to Mate, I just, as it see it. Do we so have to you, go back you, to about you, minute 15 of this podcast? or <laughs> You had to coax me into that. <laughs> that. Gotcha. Go on. I've learned a thing or two from you, Buzzy. Uh, yeah. uh, Chris wants to know... This is for you, sorry. <laughs> Chris, wants to, uh, Chris wants to know... This is for you, Buzz. Ratings, predictions for the NRL Grand Final. How will it stack up against others? You're the ratings guy. Television ratings? Yeah. It's going to be difficult for the NRL because Collingwood, am I fair to say, have more supporters than any other football club mm. in this on this in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, they're pretty well um, supported. Brisbane are going to bring a big Queensland audience. Um, their finals have been closer contests than ours, so they've attracted more eyeballs. Having said that, we have the grand final for the ages and. Um, Look, there's going to be nothing in it, Michael. Yeah, I don't know about ratings-wise. It's not my mm. domain, but yeah. hopefully, it's a it, it gets the audience. It will be a big national audience because of the Broncos in. Yes. So, 
I it's, just said that. I wasn't listening. Um, <laughs> Daniel, with reports that the Knights are looking to offload Daniel Safidi and are willing to contribute up to 400000 a season for the remaining three years, would he be on the radar of the Storm who are losing Sims and need another big forward to help Nelson bend the line? Melbourne need a front rower. Great signing for them. It won't be Daniel Safidi, though. He's not going anywhere. No, I don't think he is, is he? They wouldn't split the brothers up. It's interesting to see that he's... Didn't they have a fight in the street a couple of years ago? Mm. You're no? saying they won't split them? No. I thought they had a stink, didn't they? No. Safidi brothers? No. Well, no. Are you sure? They, they had a fight, but not with each other, I don't think. Oh, right, okay. No, I'm getting that's mixed right. up with the Jones yes. brothers. <laughs> no, it's been no, a long I know. Uh, We're tracted. I yeah. think Maddie's going to upset Andrew again in his column tomorrow because he's declaring that Nathan will be the best ever player when he finishes his career. Or oh, better than Thurston. Mm. Is that what he's saying? Yeah. Yep. He's already wa- for warned me that it might cause drama for the Christmas catch up mm. at the Johns family. Uh, we just got a, um, a listener question live. Yes. For Buzz, what does a hummingbird taste like? Hummingbird cake. It's just layers and layers of cream mm. and. Is he seven layers? How many yeah, we getting? Seven layers. Oh. Seven layers of cream. He we'll take some take photos it. on Sunday. We'll he, post he them. Really sort of a bit of carrot cake type feel with a lot of. He, yeah. He's the best cake baker ever, Jim Silver. There you go. He's the cake baker of sports editors. If go. he could sports yeah. edit as well as he could bake a, a cake. <laughs> no. <laughs> We'd be selling hundreds of thousands of more papers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right out. Well, is that it? That's it. Beautiful. Dinner, Buzz. Sorry, dinner. Don't, don't say junk or chicken curry. No, I'm at Fox, so I'll have the oh, Greek up as well. What are you? So you're going to go 360. Greek, Greek wrap. Is it a lamb? Oh, wrap I'm not or sure. I don't order. I don't order. Cater- shippers, catering. Shippers and Mick Crawley yep, order. Yeah, all over it. With the uh, executive producer who loves to mention, Mossman-based Mitch Diffin. He listens. He loves the pod. Yes. Good fella, Diffo. Nice. What are you having? We're just having steak and veg tonight. Oh, yeah? Jeez. Mm. A Diane sauce or something. Hot maybe English s- mustard. Maybe some mustard, yeah. Hot English. Or tzatziki, depending on what's in the yeah. fridge. Yeah, with a, what are you with having? a mythos? <laughs> what, what are you? <laughs> have you never had a mythos, Buzz? You um, were going vegetarian the other oh, night, then you sent around that? this thing with all pepperoni covered in pepperoni. <laughs> yeah, the pizza, your pizza looked good, actually. The homemade pizzas were Friday night. Yeah. The, the vegetarian lasagna your, was Thursday. I was worried about your arteries <laughs> when I saw that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we're going to go Thai food tonight. Oh, yeah. Stuff. Well, what's uh, the Thai order? Can you? Do a buzz, place your order. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was still the best. Yeah. I might do one next week before I knock off for summer. Nice. Yeah. Righto. All right. Well, that's us done. And enjoy your grand final day. It should yeah, be terrific. Have a good one, guys. And we'll talk to you next week. Enjoy it.